So, um, I should have made this video a long time ago. Silverstone LDO1 case, which they've released like towards the end of 2018 or like the beginning of 2019. I can't quite remember exactly, but I got this case actually in 2019. So it's it's been a while. Silverstone sent me, and I'm sorry I haven't made a video of Silverstone, but I'm just been there's been a lot of stuff happening with me, and I've only been able to get to making the videos now. As and you guys might have known, I've started making videos again and uploading more videos recently. But anyways, about this case. This is an MATX case from Silverstone, and this was kind of launched towards the height of the tempered glass hype, where everyone is putting tempered glass on everything and replacing acrylic with tempered glass on every case they have. And Silverstone took it one step further and just made the whole damn case tempered glass all around. So you can see the left right panels and the front are tempered glass, and there's this like stainless steel uh, chrome looking band that goes around the case. And I think it actually does look pretty nice. It looks pretty classy. It's not gaudy like most cases. And it looks really simple because it's just a square box with glass all around. So that's, I think the glass makes it feel more high quality than if it was just acrylic or if it's just a metal panel all around. So I really like the look and feel of this case uh, from the outside. And also on the top, you get the power button, which is, you know, it has a nice click. It's not a cheapo power button. Although you don't get a reset, but you know, you don't really need a reset these days. And you also get some USB ports, a USB 3.0 and a USB Type-C port, and also a headphone jack. And that's about it, aside from the microphone jack, if you still use that. And for the outside, on the front and the sides again, it looks simple and has tinted, like dark tint on all the glass. So right now, if I don't use any LEDs on the inside, which I don't, uh, the case just looks black and I think it looks really nice. It's just reflective black uh, surface all around the case and that's kind of what the look I'm going for here. And so uh, aside from looking at the sides in the front, which there really isn't much to see, this case does have five uh, PCIe slots for an MATX case. That's quite a lot because usually MATX case only give you four and I think that's not enough. Because, like, you can see in my case, I'm using all five. And there's uh, two graphics cards. These are RX 580, and these are in Crossfire, but totally not recommending them. It's just, this was from when I was doing mining and stuff. But anyways, I have two of them, and in between them, I have a PCIe to M.2 slot uh, adapter for my SSD, because my heart, my motherboard, the X99MWS from ASUS, doesn't support full speed uh, NVMe storage on the board slot itself, so I had to use an adapter. That's why I like this case and specifically why I asked for this case from Silverstone because I saw that this has 5 slots and there really isn't much uh, case options for MATX that has 5 PCIe slots. I think the other one is the Fractal Define Mini uh, type, Define C Mini or something like that. Uh, and that has 5 slots but there isn't a lot of other options again. Now on the back you also get the motherboard uh, I.O. panel over here and you can see that this is an inverted type of layout of the case so the graphics card on top and the motherboards on the bottom towards the power supply and this is good why because the graphics cards can now then get fresh air straight from the vent on top but that's not how i'm using it because i'm water cooling my two graphics cards and the top vent which is completely open which promotes good airflow is uh as exhaust so that's how i'm using it in this case and there's also this 120 millimeter fan mount on the back which has rails so you can slide them and you know position them right in line with your cpu cooler but in this case again i'm using this for a different purpose which i'll show you once we get inside 
but yeah, there there's not much else to say on the outside, and I think the feel of the case is pretty good. It's it's a high quality steel. It doesn't bend that much, even on the thin uh, like fan uh, grill area on the back and on the top. It's pretty stiff, so this is pretty high quality steel that Silverstone is using, and also the glass and the uh, stainless steel band all around the case. It feels really nice. The only issue is that the glass and the stainless steel band makes it quite difficult to clean the case and not clean it but keep it clean because <laughs> if you touch it just a little it'll smudge with your fingerprint so you always have a microfiber handy or something to wipe it down and yeah that's the only issue but the thing is uh, glass doesn't really scratch just like acrylic so you can pretty much just wipe it down with your cloth with your clothes or some shit and it'll work just fine too <laughs> just it's, you have to wipe it down quite often every time you touch it. Okay, so let's take off the front panel first. And here you see the two 120mm fans I have on the front. And you can fit up to two 120mm fans or radiator or two, one, two, two 140mm fans or a 280 radiator. So two 40 or 280 radiator or, and two fans on the front. And in this configuration, you can see that I have to only use two uh, screws on the top fan because otherwise, well, you'll see on the inside, it wouldn't reach my uh, hoses for my radiator because these are individual 120mm AIO water coolers. So my only gripe with this fan mount is that I wish the sliders go all the way to the top because there's actually quite a lot of space left that's empty here and Silverstone could have easily extended it all the way to the top. And maybe even made you fit three 120mm fans in the front even if you want to, if they actually extended it all the way to the top, which would help airflow and also help uh, increase water cooling options that you can do in this case. But yeah, there isn't much else. And except I have this uh, RGB controller, it's just uh, something that I put here because you know I have the Silverstone uh, AR240, PF240 ARGB water cooler that I'm also supposed to review. And this is the RGB controller. I just put it in front for convenience. I don't really change the settings and also you can see on the front that I put a lot of uh, black tape just to cover up all the holes between the fan and the mounts and the vents because I don't want the hot air to come circulating back out through the vents and into the intake fan and the hole in the bottom you can see there's a one, 192 millimeter nostril fan in there and that's the purpose is to cool the hard drive which I'll show you using uh, that I use some 3d printed brackets that I made now for the front panel itself again this is just a uh, stainless steel band all around the top and the bottom and also uh, tempered glass on the front and you might be able to see through right now that the glass is kind of offset to the left so if you use some RGB fans on the front it does kind of look like the fans are not centered and that's just by design if you don't like that then well that's too bad with this case I think they should have made it centered but then again if they do that they might have sacrificed some like radiator mounting options on the case so that's what they did. Although I think they should have just made this glass all around instead of covering it partly with plastic like this. Another thing I did was that I cut out the bottom part of the front panel because I found that this improves temperature by about like three degrees for my GPUs. Not that much, but before it was only like a small slot, mostly just to take off the front panel and the only intake that you mostly get is from the top, which you're supposed to have like a metal mesh on this, but I kind of took, took it off as well because I thought it would restrict airflow, but it actually doesn't as much as the bottom part. So I just cut out the bottom part with some, you know, plastic snips and you, you can't see it anyways once it's on, except that it just helps airflow in my case. Along with that, I also don't use the uh, front panel filter that Silverstone gave. So they have this really nice fine mesh filter on the front that you can put over the fans and it just kind of clips on and you can pop it off to change the filter or I mean clean the filter if you want to but I don't use it because I found that this increased temperatures by six degrees on my graphics cards. But again, this is a water-cooled graphics card setup and they're liquid metal to the water block. So they're much more sensitive to airflow and ambient temperatures because they're more direct kind of connection, if that makes sense to the ambient temperature compared to a normal setup. So I'm just not gonna use any filters and just gonna clean the case more often than usual. So now let's take off the front panel, I mean the side panel and see what looks on the inside on my setup. So as you can see here, on my setup, I have made it so it is quite interesting on my setup. Uh, I have a 3D printed bracket for my water cooler for my CPU here. 
It's the Silverstone PF240 ARGB water cooler that they recently released. And it actually performs really well. It can cool a 6950X at 4.5 or 4.4 GHz. I have some cores in 4.4 or 4.5. And at almost 1.4 volts, like 1.38 or 1.39 volts on a 6950X is a 10 core, 20 thread i7 Extreme CPU and it pulls over 300 watts under load and this thing can cool it just fine uh, especially even in this case when I put the side panel on because how it works is that my 3D printed bracket will make it so it seals to the glass and it sucks air in from the back and the GPU radiators will suck air in from the front and blow it all into the case and then the top fans here on the top vent mounting it's just gonna exhaust it out the top. I have Noctua fans all around these are all IPPC 3000 fans 120mm and 140mm and even on the power supply, I replaced it with a Noshua 120mm IPPC fan, just because. Uh, but I have some like 9cm Noshua NFA9X15s on the GPU for the VRM on the second one, and also for the hard drive over here, which I'll get to later. And I also have a Chrome X 120 uh, by 15 fan from Noshua for exhaust, because it doesn't fit with the graphics card. Which brings me to the two complaints when I'm building this PC and using it, which is that it has three, hard, three and a half inch hard drive mounts in the front here, underneath the power supply shroud, which the bracket, by the way, you can move forwards and backwards if you want more space between the power supply, but you'll see later you don't really need to. Uh, so I just moved it all the way to the back, which is the standard configuration. But the thing is, this hard drive mount doesn't have that much uh, spacing for vents on the hard drive, so it does get quite toasty. That's what I had to do to make this uh, 3D printed uh, shroud for the bottom hard drive. And in here there's a fan in it that blows directly on the hard drive and sucks cold air from the front. If I don't do this, the hard drives get to like 50 something degrees to 60 degrees, which is really toasty. Uh, but if I do this, it drops all the way to like low 40s, which is more acceptable. Uh, that's the only gripe with the temperature on this case because the GPUs and the CPUs cool just almost as well as without any panels on, on this case. And also from the top uh, vent, I wish that this case was just slightly taller because then I could fit like full size fans all the way on the top. But then again, I have quite a unique setup and not everyone is going to use like two graphics cards which are dual slot and expect to put like full size fans on the top. So that's not really a big deal to me. This works just fine, but it's just it's going to be good if to me like this case is already not the smallest, not the smallest MATX case. So I don't think it would hurt anyone if this is just like a few millimeters taller and I can put full size fans both on the top slots over here instead of uh, one slim fan on the back. But yeah, uh, in terms of building it, it's quite easy to access everything and you can see the cable management. Well, Silverstone has rubber grommets on everything and they have holes for the right things like the front panel and the CPU power and the ATX and the PCIe GPU power uh, cables as well. So you can make it quite neat. It's just that in my setup, it's quite cramped. So I don't really have to make it that neat anyways. You can't really see the cables. Here on the back side of the case, you can see that the cable management that I did on my uh, PC here, it's not the best. <laughs> I just tried to tuck everything in so that it doesn't prevent the panel from closing, uh, which is actually not that hard because you actually have a lot of space between the back side uh, panel, which is the glass one, and the back of the motherboard for cable management. You can even put like a, a fan controller here, which is like quite a thick brick from Silverstone. This is like an eight fan controller. Uh, like fan splitter, sorry, and also fit like a lot of cables on the bottom, which is the ATX 12 volt, uh, and also a lot of stuff, and even two hard drives on the SSD, sorry, on the back here, which you can put. These are two and a half inch SSDs, so you can put two two and a half inch SSDs on the back and three three and a half inch SSD uh, hard drives on the uh, hard drive slots in the front, and you can move it front and back, like I said. But then you can see that this is my power supply, and the hard drives start. Here, so there's already plenty of space for cables here unless you have a really long power supply I don't see any reason you have to move the hard drive cage forward anyway So I just left it like that and I has I still have plenty of space to tuck my cables in so cable management in this case Is really quite easy as well. There's lots of space and You know if you use a short power supply like I do then you can see there's a lot of space in between it and I think that you can make it quite neat if you want to I tried to using zip ties there's lots of zip tie locations. There's even zip ties over here. Just that I changed some fan configurations and haven't really like properly zip tied everything back together neatly yet. So that's why it's quite messy. 
but with the rear panel on like you see before you can't really see true to the cables anyways even if you don't really like clean it up unless you put leds on the back so i don't think that's really a, much of a problem to have to like tidy up the cables because it's all glass because it's really dark tinted so you can't really see through it unless you have leds behind it or you shine a light through it but yeah with this case i don't really have a lot of complaints except for well i wish there was triple 120 mounts in the front and more slots you know you can slide the fan on a on the front panel higher and i wish it was just slightly higher so you could fit full-size fans on the top and i don't really see any more reason to complain about this case uh, uh it all went about just fine and i kind of molded it to the way i want it in my case uh, on my pc build and this worked out just fine with the rear side intaking air at the front and exhausting out the top temperatures are quite good as well with my setup and opening the panels only drop a couple degrees which is not a big deal and yeah, uh, this case is pretty high quality as well with the glass panels and the stainless steel bands. So if you're looking to get a MATX case that has five slots and also inverted one, if you want to put this on the left side of your PC uh, battle station so you can see your parts, this is quite a good fit. And yeah, the price is kind of expensive, but you're also getting three tempered glass panels. So I think that's what's pushing up the price. Uh, but maybe Silverstone could come up with like an RGB model with like RGB fans on the front that um, that's supplied by Silverstone or something. And that would really push this case into the newer, uh, like more updated case designs of this year. Because, you know, I feel like no one's buying a case or any PC components unless it has RGB. And for over 100 bucks for an MATX case, which is quite steep, Silverstone could have put RGB LEDs on this thing or something or more features in it. But otherwise, it's a pretty well built case and it looks pretty nice to me and if you like the looks i wouldn't worry about the airflow because it really is quite a good airflow even though it's all glass and yeah that's about it for this review hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you do please leave a like and please click subscribe to see more of my videos and i'll do a review of the water cooler as well pretty soon thanks for watching